What's up, YouTube and podcast listeners? It's me and Maxter. We're back with Behind the Mod, Season 2, Episode 6, and we are here with Amadorns. Did I pronounce that right? Um, yeah, I guess. It was never meant to be pronounced like that, but when I got into the English-speaking community, they just did it that we way. So it. I, it, it, just, it just stuck. So, why not? Okay, well, uh... <laughs> that works. Uh, welcome to the show. Um, <clears throat> you're not just a modder, you also uh, stream and are a forge crafter. So let's rewind to how you got involved with the community to begin with. Okay, so this was probably five, maybe five and a half years ago. Um, I discovered Minecraft back in 1.1, 1. 1, maybe 1. 1.2. And... I really didn't know all that much about it. I saw there was this cube game. It was it, it was cool, but after playing a couple times, it just got boring. So I started investigating about these things called bucket plugins, and I started making my own. I actually learned Java to make bucket plugins, and. Then in 1.2, I discovered with TechIt and all the big rise of mod packs, I discovered modding. That's where I actually got started with uh, mod development. Although I do not have any mods for 1.25, 1.3, or 1.4. Huh. So it's kind of interesting that you started with Bucket. That's not something we hear a lot um, in terms of, you know, server-side plugins. Um, yeah. what was it like going from that to kind of, um, just in general, uh, stuff like, uh, you know, client mods with Forge? Well, that was actually one of the big reasons I moved over to Forge, because I wanted client-side stuff. I was tired of having GUIs made with just chest inventories and villager inventories. Mm -hmm. So, I wanted to make GUIs, I wanted to make cool-looking things. And I switched over to Forge, and it was quite different. It wasn't this huge abstraction layer that Bucket is. And I had to work directly with the code. And when the first uh, kind of version change came, it was pretty huge. Like, I had to pretty much refactor all of my code, because this was the move from 1.2 to 1.3. And that's when the client and server were both part of the same thing. Yeah. So it was a big change. But I'm really happy I moved over to Forge because none of the things I do right now were possible with Bucket. Huh. Yeah, you do have pretty ambitious mods, especially recently. Um, what was the first Forge mod you made? Um, well, 12 year old me thought, uh, with very little creativity of making a tech mod, um, that basically had some features from Railcraft, some features from IC2, some from Buildcraft, and a couple of other little things here and there, uh, and called it TechQuake. Very, I don't know, I, I don't even know where that name came from. I just came up with it someday, and yeah, it was it was my kind of starter tech mod. Um, I had no clue what I was doing. I just knew very very basic Java, and that was about it. I I couldn't do much. Huh? And so it was just kind of your experimenting grounds where you just uh, yeah. threw in a bunch of tech ideas. Yeah, and then when I moved to, I think this was maybe on 1.5, when FMP first got introduced, um, I actually started looking into other Modus APIs, and I started supporting FMP with my cables and, and a couple other things. That was around the time uh, my first mod jam happened, I think. And... Huh. That was when I actually started looking at other mods and possibly making them compatible with mine. 
Hmm. So stuff like Forge Multipart, for those who don't know, is um, a or was an API for creating uh, you know multiple blocks in one space. Stuff like microblocks. Um, was that your first experience integrating oh. APIs or yeah. other mods into your own? Yeah, that was the first one. Then came Wayla, I think, um, and I also started supporting IC2. So those were my first few APIs. Huh. Yeah, I think that's basically what our community um, rests on now. I mean, we have RF, we have all sorts of stuff um, that makes a big deal nowadays. Um, but I guess back then it wasn't nearly as unified or as um, organized. Yeah, really, back in the day, it was such a small set of mods that the developers of the mods that wanted to work together had to actually add code inside their mods to specifically support something inside another mod's code. There was no such thing as an API per se. There was not this layer of code that you can interact with very easily like you can now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely uh, different times. And, um, I think at some point, I forget what point, maybe it was one six. you made Blue Power. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Right, so Blue Power was um, my effort along with uh, Quetzes, Mine Martins, and K4s um, to kind of bring back Red Power, but we didn't want it to be exactly Red Power. And this is something I see very often, like, people want an exact clone or an exact recreation of an old mod. We wanted to add our own features, so we added three types of wires, for example. Um, we started working on integrated circuits, a few things here and there. It was mostly like Red Power, so users wanted to have that kind of experience from... Uh, 1 to 5 and 1 for 7 could continue playing with that sort of mod but we wanted our own ideas to also be there hmm. so it was kind of it wasn't just like oh we're porting uh, Project E style this to 110 or sorry yeah. 17 or whatever uh, we're kind of making a new mod yeah it was take the concept expand upon it and make it a thing hmm. and how did people react to that um, there were mixed reactions, considering Project Red was already a thing, and it already did all of the redstone stuff, and gates, and really all the more techy players wanted. Um, so our main focus at first was to add the machines, so tubes, uh, sorting machines, all that stuff, and power. Um, but... I wasn't too interested in those things, and I was part of the project, so I said, ah, well, I'm, I'm just going to implement circuits, because why not? I can, so. And that's huh. when people started seeing Blue Power as this kind of mod that's competing against Project Red, and that's when we started getting mixed reactions, and also we got a lot of mixed opinions with the move to 32x textures which i personally am not a great fan of but we didn't want to be just a copycat so we had to go with something different so you were creating your own kind of unique style it's not red power it's not project red it's uh blue power yeah 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 stuff like 32x textures and just in general um you know the community doesn't like change or just stuff that can be different uh you can look at stuff like draconic evolution i think the textures for that are very uh, different some people don't like that um it's always interesting how people differentiate their mods though yeah and it's also the 32x textures thing is is rather interesting because you can manage to get 32x textures into a mod and actually make it look good alongside 16x textures it's just mostly meant for details. And when mods go with 32x textures, they actually end up just making the whole thing 32x. And that kind of makes it not look 
as great or, or maybe not fit as well. So, right. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You don't want to have like shading and a t- ton of fancy stuff alongside the vanilla textures. Yeah. Yeah. Um, then I guess you made frames, which is, uh, you know, a frame kind of block movie mod uh, that you're currently working on updating uh, past 1.7. Um, yeah. What made you decide to initially do frames? Uh, well, so I love challenges. Um, and I was kind of bored one week. I was just, let's make a mod in just seven days. I have seven days to make a mod. Give me ideas. And somebody wanted a red power frame clone. And I just made it in a week. I streamed the entire development of the mod. This was back when I didn't even have a microphone. And it worked rather well for being done in like, I don't know, maybe less than 72 hours. Yeah. Huh. And from there, you kind of refined it and polished it um, because people seem to like it, yeah. Yeah, Frames has always been my kind of challenge mod. So it started, it actually started before Blue Power. It started in early 1.6 as my one-week challenge. Then came Frames 1. This was, first one was quote-unquote Frames, just Frames. Um... Then came Frames 1, which was my five-day challenge. Frames 2 was my two-day challenge. (laughs) And Frames 3 was, let's make a Frames mod in about 12 hours. Oh my god. Will it work? And it actually kind of did. And as I love doing, I just took that code and rewrote it. Because that's what I do. Yeah. So I, I'm seeing a theme here. You seem to like to challenge yourself, especially on, you know, stuff like live streaming or just um, in front of an audience. Um, yeah. What, what gets you so excited about that? I don't know. It's just that feel of like, let's see how far I can push myself and do this rather complicated thing I haven't really studied before. And do it from scratch. Let's let's just not use anything as a base. I'm not. I'm, I'm. I already have a concept, but I don't have anything apart from that. That's also why I love something like Mod Jam, and why I wish it would happen again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, stuff like that definitely adds more uh, vibrancy to the community. Yeah. Uh, do you still see frames being, I guess, highly demanded in its current state in our 110 plus world? Or are you going to try to, you know, uh, challenge yourself again and completely redo it? How are you approaching porting that? Um, well, <laughs> I love rewriting things. And frames for 110 is a rewrite of frames for 1.7. And in 1.7, I added this really cool feature where any mod developer through Frames' API, could add support for their own power system. And in 1.10, I am taking that, like, not one step further, but probably, like, 10, and making the entire thing modular. I just give you the framework to move blocks from point A to point B, and you can make your own types of motors with your own kinds of movement. You can... Have them support any power system, be triggered by buildcraft gates, and do pretty much whatever you like with them. So, Frames 3 is basically the modular Frames mod. Huh. And that's, I think, something that most people are really going to like. Because if you're into Botania, and you don't like tech mods, then you can just power a motor with mana. That's That's, awesome, that's yeah. fine. You can power it with Essentia from Thonecraft. That's okay. It just works. Yeah, I expect so, a Thonecraft add-on uh, very soon, once Thonecraft and Frames are both updated. Yeah. Yeah. And Frames 3 um, is also a pretty big challenge, because I am taking the whole movement thing one step further as well. Um, in Frames 1, I had um, basically sliding, like in Red Power Frames, 
In frames 2, I added rotators, and I also added pushers, and in frames 3, I am adding recursive movement. So you can have something that's rotating and sliding to the side at the same time, which is going to yeah. be pretty crazy. Yeah, good luck doing that in Minecraft, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, that's quite a challenge. Um, you've also made MC multi-part, which is, um, like we mentioned before, kind of like Forge multi-part, but it's this uh, newer system you made uh, with, for micro blocks and for just having you know multiple things in the same block space. Um, what made you decide to do that? Well, Forge, since Red Power added the first kind of multi-part system, has always wanted to have that system inside the main API so that everyone can use it. And Forge Multipart was an attempt at that. What happened is that Chicken Bones ended up writing it in Scala, which is not the programming language Forge uses, and it ended up doing a lot of different hacks to actually make the thing work. And that's why it was released as Forge Multipart, even though it wasn't part of Forge. So mm -hmm. MC Multipart was kind of the attempt at doing the same thing uh, FMP tried to do, but in a more Forge-friendly manner, I guess. So you think it'll succeed where uh, FMP didn't? Well, I guess it kind of has because it is being implemented into Forge, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a complicated topic. Um, I did make it um into a into a state where it was ready to be pulled into forge and then lex reviewed it and it didn't go all that well and i am now rewriting it it's going to be completely redone a completely different system but hopefully lex will like it because supporting mc multipart same as fmp is Basically, re-implementing your block, and your tile entity, and all your rendering code. In the actual Forge multipart I'm working on, it's just, I have a block. This is a multipart now. Done. So you think it's going to be more um, accepted by Lex and just the Forge team in general? Yeah. that It's, it's just going to be, anyone can make a multipart without knowing any kind of advanced Java or without having to create duplicates of their code. It's just going to be this very simple thing to implement and interact with. Awesome. Um, Forge multi-part, I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> MC multi-part in its current state though right now is, is a mod. Um, it's compatible with a lot of stuff. What's it been like working with all these new, uh, you know, new mods like chisels and bits? Um, there is a great thing about doing this now compared to doing it back when Chicken Bones did it. And it's the fact that nowadays mod developers are really engaging and they really like to interact with the people that make the APIs they use and to modify the code and suggest changes and stuff like that. And in general, it's been a great experience. I've had lots of help from lots of different mod authors with, like, pretty much everything in MC Multipart. So, in general, it's been a great experience. I do not regret it at all. I hope it keeps being that way. Huh. Why do you think our community is more, I guess, uh, interactive now uh, between itself? That's, that's a hard question. Um... Well, bearing in mind what I said before about the past of modding where it was all a very kind of closed community, there were these like small groups of modders who supported each other and worked with each other, but those different groups didn't actually talk to each other all that much. They only talked with the members of the group. Mm -hmm. So... Now it's, it's like, really open. Anyone can make a mod. They just upload it to a website where every single mod is available. 
and it's not it's such a closed group system. It's it's all very I don't know community driven. Yeah, I think moving past stuff like the Minecraft forums, which you know wasn't terrible, but just having stuff like Curse Forge and um, communities on Discord or on whatever um, has helped a lot. It has. It really, really has. So that's MC Multipart, and that's pretty cool. Hopefully that'll go well with Forge and everything. Um, you've been working on an upcoming mod, um, Super Circuit Maker, or SEM, which has been hyped up a lot on Twitter. For the three yeah. people who don't know what it is, uh, can you explain? Okay, so if you've played with Red Power or you've played with Project Red, um, you know that in Minecraft you can build this single block uh, logic gates, which, if you're used to vanilla redstone, usually take up a pretty humongous amount of space. Um, so SCM basically takes that and makes it modular. It gives you a circuit plate where you can place pretty much any of the basic redstone components, so uh, redstone wire, torches, levers, all that stuff, as well as a bunch of other components that I have added myself. Um, and it lets you build really compact circuits. So, like, say, if you're making an adventure map or something that needs a lot of redstone, you don't need to have this quite so labyrinthine, um, you know, yeah. hidden part full of uh, circuits. Yeah, so let's, let's use my little 3-bit computer as an example. And I say little because in vanilla this would be hundreds and hundreds of blocks. And mm -hmm. here it's just... Let me actually count because I'm I'm in my dev world. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six by seven blocks. That's a full-fledged three-bit computer that can actually be programmed with punch cards. Huh. So you can do really, really tiny things. And do you think um not just making it smaller, but do you think by making it smaller uh, people are going to be able to do more complicated things that they just couldn't do at all before? That's that's probably going to happen, yeah. Because in the past, if you had a redstone build and it took up a good amount of space, you probably just scrapped it and moved to a computer. You just had that computer toggle on and off the signals and do whatever you wanted it to do. So, with SCM, I think what's going to happen is that people are going to be able to make those pretty big builds into something rather small. So, it's not going to involve so much coding as, like, actually thinking how you want the circuit to be designed, which is the original point of Redstone. Right, there's not going to be any architectural, like, oh, okay, I'll make a spiral, like, you know, DNA double helix here so that I can hmm. be space efficient. They can just um, be actually efficient. Yeah. And also yeah. the new circuits and circuits mechanic is probably going to be pretty handy for those that want to build a rather complex circuit because they can make a circuit and based on the components that are placed on it, that circuit has a complexity. So if that complexity is less or equal to one, you can take that circuit and place it inside another one, and that's going to take up a one-by-one one space in the grid. If it's less than four, it's going to be a two-by-two, two. and if it's less than th the, if it's less than nine, it's going to be a three-by-three. Three. So, huh. in the end, you can make relatively small circuits that do a ton of stuff. Yeah, for sure. And will um, are you going to have um? Super Circuit Maker um, be designed for creative and survival? Like, what's the main gameplay uh, focus for it? Well, really, you can you can play with it however you want. I have a couple of creative-friendly options. Like, for example, uh, left-clicking a circuit will not break it. You have to actually shift and left-click to prevent creative players from just destroying their setups. That'll save a lot of uh, frustra frustration. <laughs> yeah. 
It sure will, and it's also made for survival. Like, logic gates are something you tend to need in survival gameplay. So, I kind of try to make logic gates and this binary thinking um, a bit more accessible than, I don't know, something like programming, which is not something everyone wants to do in their Minecraft. Mm -hmm. yeah for sure um yes anything like computer craft or whatever that kind of can apply that into survival mechanics or just minecraft mechanics i think is really cool hello 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 oh okay um <laughs> <laughs> so how long have you been working on uh scm and how close do you think you are to release Okay, that's that's the question I get all the time. Um, SCM was another one of my let's make a mod in a weekend projects. And I did it. It was 2D. So then I rewrote it and it moved from 2D to 3D space. That was a pretty big change. It was rather new when it comes to circuits. And it took me a while and now I'm working on one of the main features which one would assume will be a thing but it's actually a pain to do um, I'm working on allowing you to place circuits on walls and it's hard <laughs> because I got all my math wrong so I have to rewrite pretty much all the rendering and all the interaction with components before the mod can be released. Huh. So maybe next week, which is what okay. I've been saying for the past four, five weeks. <laughs> maybe next week. Uh, yeah, it, I guess that's pretty unusual for you because normally you like to release things pretty quickly. So yeah. why you been, um, what makes you so you know focused on having a ton of really cool features for this initial release? Uh, hype. I do not like building up hype and then not living up to it. So if I make a mod and I hype it up, I want it to be as good as people expect it to be and not worse. Yeah, that makes sense. Are you, do, do you get the sense that you know people on Twitter and just people who've seen the mod, they're excited? They are, yeah. I get a couple, maybe three, four, depends on the day, uh, of messages on Reddit and Twitter asking when it'll be released. So I I have a feeling people are interested, yeah. Awesome. Um yeah, that's that's SEM and hopefully hopefully next week. Um <laughs> yeah. yeah. Outside of Minecraft you've kind of been making your own game, right? I have for many years. And they've all failed. So now I'm trying to take a more I don't know. I, I've been trying to think of what I want my game to be before I actually start implementing it. In the past, I was kind of just making a game engine and then quitting because I didn't have anything I was interested in inside that game engine. So this time I'm trying to build it with like some content as I work on, on the engine itself, which has turned out to be more engaging for me than the old hmm. projects so you're working on a pretty low level because you're building your own engine yeah i have access to OpenGL, hopefully vulcan very soon um and that's about all i have i need to write my own rendering code i need to do all the transformations, all the physics calculations, which are a pain if you haven't done physics before. And it's yeah. it's a really nice learning experience, though. It's huh. something I'm happy I'm working on. In terms of like what the game is going to be, do you have any, any ideas? So what I've been telling people when they ask that, um, my kind of general idea is modded minecraft the game so a cube game a, a voxel game um 
but I feel like Minecraft is is kind of empty, and it's this kind of empty shell that mods are built on top of. Right. So I don't want my game to be as empty. So I'm already adding features into the main kind of core of the game to allow for things like a chisels and bits esque system that's going to be built right into the game. And I want to have multiple progression trees uh, on, around different topics, really. Hmm. It's, it's going to be do what you want, role play a bit, have fun with your friends, and, and basically that. And also, it has a native modding API, which oh, I think because... people are going to like. That was going to be my next question, but yeah, that I think if you're if you're making modern Minecraft a game, that's pretty important to have because um, as many cool ideas as you can have, there's definitely cool ideas that other people probably have too. Yeah, and Minecraft isn't really meant to be modded, so I'm taking the complete opposite approach for this game, and the actual game is built on top of the API, so. Although the game content is not available as a mod you can enable and disable, it's pretty much a mod in terms of how it's implemented. I'm not accessing any kind of internal stuff from the game code. Huh. That's pretty neat. And so in terms of stuff like you mentioned, you know, Vulcan, um, this, and how this is being built in its own engine, um, that's what you're experimenting with. How do you feel about like you know maybe people making Minecraft look really much better? Like, would this be something like that? Like, oh, a bunch of fancy uh, built-in shaders and stuff like that? Yes, but no. I want to keep that voxel feel, so it's it's still gonna be blocky. But I want it to have more kind of realistic shading. Um, I. I'm definitely going to add lighting, and that's going to be a thing for sure. It's not just going to be the basic voxel lighting that Minecraft has. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be a thing for sure. And we'll see about other things like maybe reflections on water and stuff like that. Um, I've been investigating, and it's rather painful to do. But yeah. we'll see. Uh, I have actually recently modified the game uh, from my quote-unquote closed rendering pipeline to a more open one. So in the past, it was just use this kind of vertices with this data, and that's all you have access to. So the new system allows any block to define its own uh, rendering pipeline. So each block can use a different shader. And you can use a different, I don't know, whatever, really. So if you want to make a portal gun mod, with the previous system, that was not possible. With the new one, you can actually record the screen at the specific position you want, and then render it onto the block very, very easily. And right. It's actually well, a very high level, so you don't have to be a master of OpenGL to actually. That's do. funny because the actual you know portal gun mod for Minecraft for my Chun, he's kind of tried to do something like that before, but I think he's given up for performance reasons. Actually, um, not sure if you know, but I am also working on the portal gun mod with Ichun. Oh, okay. So, Another rewrite. Uh, kind of, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it should've, it's, should've it's another asked. rewrite, yeah, yeah. mostly. Um, he did the basic porting and then called me in for the see-through portals. And we got them working. It just needs a few fixes. So, not sure if you can um, show this on the video, but I will link you later a couple of videos of how the portals look now compared to how they looked in the past. Because I went a bit crazy one afternoon and decided to write a shader to have that swirling effect on the border of the portals that like the actual portal game has. Mm -hmm. And I made a shader for that and I implemented it into the portal game mode. 
and he looks oh, wow. amazing. That's awesome. So yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll throw that up somewhere in the video so you guys will see that now, or maybe you just saw it a minute ago. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that that sounds awesome. Um, outside of so, do you think do you see this kind of like even if you don't, um, you know, uh, initially succeed in making this, uh, do you think it's going to give you ideas for other mods uh, for Minecraft? Yeah, it's it's probably going to be a really big help when it comes to creative concepts and, and new ideas because if you start with something you already have this kind of base of okay this is what's already there i should probably build around it and, and do something that's relatively similar i guess but if you have a completely blank slate you can do pretty much everything you want so from this completely empty canvas that I'm working on now, I can draw a lot of ideas and then maybe adapt them a bit and make them into Minecraft mods. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because that's, that's uh, I think, a great creator process that not many modders can say they have. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, any speaking of future Minecraft mods, do you have any ideas for that? Like, what do you see happening in the near future with you and Minecraft modding? I have to release SCM maybe next week, and I have a couple other projects. Um, kind of keeping them secret-ish. Um, the people that watch my streams probably already know about them. The people in my IRC channels probably already know about them. Um, but I'm not giving any details to anyone, so not even they know what the mod is really about. Um, but it's a tech mod. Ooh. Like no other tech mod has ever been. So it's a three-tier... Um, it's based around the three-tier system. Not exactly sure if it's going to be three or if we're going to add um, two tiers in between those. But it's going to be a mod that kind of tries to accompany you from very, very early game. So when you get your wooden tools until you end the game, be it by killing the dragon or finishing whatever pack you're playing. It's supposed huh. to last throughout the entire game experience. Hmm. So that's pretty ambitious. Yeah, and it's a rather big project. People have wanted me to tell them, like, compared to other mods' content, how much does it add? And I've said a couple IC2s plus a buildcraft is about where we're going to have. It's going to be a rather big mod, and in fact, Super Circuit Maker is going to be part of it. It's going to be part of the tier 2... Um, set of blocks and, and utilities um so there you go in tier two you unlock redstone that's that's a hint huh. um so another thing that people freak out when i tell them is each tier is gonna have its own power system Ooh. <laughs> and they are really confused about it because they think of power systems as just electricity or quote-unquote electricity, because RF isn't even any close to electricity. It's just a number. <laughs> yeah. And in relation to that thing you just said, it's just a number. My power systems, they're two variable power systems. So no EC, this is how much power my machine is producing, this is how much power my other machine takes. Let's just power this machine with that power. Here you actually have to think, well, this machine can produce this amount of power um, on variable A and on variable B, but this other machine requires you to multiply those two, and this is, the result of that multiplication has to be at least this. So is it like run. current and voltage, sort of? Um, yes, that's, that's one of the like kind of analogies you you would use um 
similar to how real life electricity works, um, you would do those kinds of calculations. They're relatively simple. Like, you're not going to need a PhD to be able to do any of the math behind the mod. No Electrocraft style stuff here. Um, no, it's, it's not going to be a super complex mod, but it's not going to be easy either. It's going to be for the average tech mod player that wants a bit more of their Minecraft experience. Huh, and how do you think it's going to play with, you mentioned, you know, early game for wooden tools. Is it going to be like an overhaul for vanilla and other mods? Like, how is it going to play with those? And that is something I was actually going to tell you about in a moment. Um, I am building the mod as a standalone thing. Is going to play well with other mods and stuff like that. But I am also building what I'm calling an immersion pack around it. With a small set of mods. It's currently small. But it may grow. Um, where everything is kind of tweaked. Not just in the other mods. But also in this mod's progression. To hmm. kind of fit and be more engaging for the player. So I'm looking forward to seeing what people think of that. It's huh, that... not something that's done very often. It's it's a mod built standalone and a pack built around the mod, but then the mod has to kind of be built around the pack as well. So huh. it's, it's an interesting concept. So it's going to have like an official immersive style pack? Yeah, that's huh. definitely going to be a thing. That's interesting, huh? Um, for sure. and But you will also be re releasing it standalone for other pack makers or just people who want to download the mod. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's of course, going to happen. There would be no point of me in me spending, like, it's it's already been 10 months. Um, oh, wow. And we haven't done, like, anything. <laughs> there wouldn't well, be a point in me doing that and then not releasing it as a standalone mod. Awesome. Well, uh, hope that goes well, and I that sounds pretty exciting for everyone who loves tech or just mods in general. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming on. It's been awesome having you on the show. Uh, any having more? Me. Yeah. Any more uh, closing thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I mean, just keep having fun with the game. It's it's what I do, and it's really just the idea behind the game. It's just have fun, be creative. Yeah, but it's pretty awesome that uh, you came on. Um, pretty awesome that all of you guys are watching this uh, or listening to, however you're listening to. Um, hope you're hope uh, you're excited for the portal gun stuff, the um, tech mod stuff, and of course, separate circuit maker, which is a lot more immediate, hopefully, than those other two things. Clearly, next week. Yeah, next week. Uh, that's not a promise, but yeah, next <laughs> week. Okay. Um, see ya. Um, and yeah, have see you in the next one. Goodbye. Bye-bye.